Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're doing well. In 1 Samuel chapter number 26, we read how David once again has an opportunity to take things or matters into his own hands and uh, take the life of Saul, who is still pursuing him. In the last lesson, you know, we, he had an encounter with Nabal, who was a wicked man, and his wife, Abigail, um, saved the day. And David said, you know, he kept me from taking salvation um, into my own hands or working it with my own hands. Uh, and you kept me from blood guilt. So the lesson I think as we were seeing here is, is David is learning that God is sovereign over his life and works out his plan in his own perfect time. Now, um, even though Saul has said he will not pursue David anymore, he's come with 3,000 um, men. Um, in verse number two, he says, So Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph with 3,000 chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Um, David isn't trying to create trouble for Saul, but Saul and his envy and jealousy and moved by an evil spirit um, tries to destroy um, David at every opportunity. And then in verse 7, it says, So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there lay Saul sleeping with the encampment, with his spear stuck in the ground at his head, and Abner and the army lay around him. Then Abishai said to David, God has given your enemy into your hand this day. Now please let me pin him to the earth with one stroke of the spear, and I will not strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who can put out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? See, here's David's um, companion in, in, in arms, and he says, Just one thrust of the spear to kill him. And he says, God's given him into your hands. You know, it, we can make excuses to say, Well, God gave me this opportunity, but God doesn't give us opportunities to do evil or to take matters into our own hands. You know, in our day, it's easy to think, well, I got to make things happen instead of trusting the Lord and saying, okay, Lord, what do you want to do? And David said, who can, who can touch the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? And verse 10 says, and David said, as the Lord lives, the Lord will strike him or his day will come to die or he will go down into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should put out my hand against the Lord's anointed. But take now the spear that is at his head and the jar of water and let us go. So he's going to show Saul that he had this opportunity but didn't take advantage of it. And the Lord had caused them to be in a deep sleep. And they take the spear, they take the water jug, and they travel uh over a certain area that would keep them safe. And then they call out in verse 18, he said, why does the Lord pursue after his servant? For what have I done? What evil is on my hands? <laughs> he calls out to Saul. Now therefore let my Lord the king hear the word of his servant. If it is the Lord who has stirred you up against me, may he accept an offering. But if it is if it is men, may they be cursed before the Lord, for they have driven me out this day that I should have no share in the heritage of the Lord, saying, go serve other gods. Now, therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth away from the presence of the Lord, for the king of Israel has come out to seek a single flea, like one who hunts a partridge in the mountains. David is exercising humility, but he's reminding him, I haven't done anything. What is stirring you to such hatred for me? I'm but a flea to think little of himself, right? And Saul said, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do you harm because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Behold, I have acted foolishly and have made a great mistake. 
And David answered and said, Here is the spear, O king. Let one of the young men come over and take it. The Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. David didn't want to flee um, to other lands where there were other gods. He wanted to be a part of the nation that uh, was called out by God. He had an opportunity two different times. He was encouraged. Get him. God's given him into your hand. He says, no, God is sovereign over this. And God is the one who is in control of our lives. God will take care of it. He'll either die of old age or he'll die in battle or some way. And, you know, it was God who struck down Nabal when he had um, insulted the, the, the soldiers of David. See, when we let God do what is God's responsibility, we're safe. When we step into the place where we think we need to be in control and make things happen or take vengeance as our own, then we're always going to find ourselves in making a bigger mess than we ever intended. And so I want to encourage you to remember, as a child of God living in a new covenant, that he's always with you. And in every moment and in every decision, you have a God who is in control and sovereign. Now you may not understand your circumstances. You may not understand why you're going through a certain hardship or difficulty, but don't let loose that God loves you and he is in control. And the things that he allows to come into our lives, he allows for a purpose that he'll use all things together for good. Not all things are good, but he uses them for our good because we are his beloved children. And that's a promise that we hold on to. And as we look at David and his journey, he didn't do anything. He was a hero of Israel. He killed Goliath. He'd been faithful to the king, and here he is running for his life. He has opportunity to take revenge, but he doesn't because he says, you know what? God will take care of it in his own time, and it's a perfect timing. So you trust the Lord to, to take care of all of the matters of your life. It's not passivity. It's not that we don't do anything. It's we wait, we hear his voice, and we respond. It's an active surrender to the indwelling presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our life now. Have a great day. God bless.